two of the most impressive hypotheses from, selfish, from the selfish gene are that we're not evolving to something perfect. We're basically a shell for all these genes. And secondly, MEMS regard, relating to the propagation of religion. Could you briefly comment on these two hypotheses call, and how they've held up right. over the years? Um, I, I call the individual body a survival machine for the genes. Uh, if you look at natural selection, it's the differential survival of something. Survival of the fittest, the differential survival, the struggle for existence. The thing about genes is that they are potentially immortal. Because they are accurately copied, DNA is accurately copied from generation to generation to generation to generation. That's the only thing which has the uh, possibility of lasting eternally, or for a very, very long time, literally for geological time. And so all the animals that we see, and all the humans, all the plants that, that we see, carry within them genes which have made it through countless generations. They're the survivors. They are the survivors. Bodies aren't. Individuals aren't survivors. Individuals die. Individuals last just long enough to pass on the genes that built them. They are temporary. Genes are permanent. Some genes are better at it than others. The genes that are bad at it, meaning bad at building bodies that survive, aren't with us anymore because they're bad, because they don't help the bodies to survive. The genes that survive are the ones that through many generations have been good at programming bodies to preserve them and pass them on. That's why bodies are so good at surviving. That's why birds are so good at flying and fish are so good at swimming and squirrels are so good at climbing and moles are so good at burrowing. Because they're all built by genes that have come through thousands of generations of ancestral moles or birds or dolphins or or, or monkeys, whatever it is. And in every case, they've succeeded in surviving at least long enough to have at least one heterosexual copulation and rear at least one child. Um, so the body is the temporary survival machine. The gene is the immortal <coughs> replicator, that which survives or fails to survive. Memes, which is the pronunciation I Oops. favor, um, are units of cultural inheritance. And I introduced them in the last chapter of the first edition of The Selfish Gene, really only to uh, illustrate the point that although I, the whole of the rest of the book had been emphasizing the gene as the unit of selection, it didn't have to be DNA. The property of genes that makes them replicators is that they are copied from generation to generation. Now, um, that, they're not the only things that are. Memes are units of cultural inheritance, accents, clothes fashions, tunes, uh, jokes, things that get copied from one brain to another are potentially replicators in the same kind of way as genes are. And therefore, potentially, although this may not be realized, they are therefore potentially units of a kind of natural selection. Uh, I don't know if, to what extent they really are, subject to natural selection, but it's a different sort of natural selection from genetic natural selection. Um, so my original plan was just to de-emphasize the gene as the only possible unit of selection. Others have run with the idea and made it into more of a theory of human culture, which I never uh, aspired to. What do, you, what do you think of people stealing the word memes, which it's, it's all over the news, it's popular culture, for a number of years, people use it all incorrectly. What do you think? Well, of I'm very happy for people to use the word because it, because the internet is prime fodder for memes. I mean, it's a it's a wonderful <laughs> ecosystem for memes. Um, for, for some reason, uh, that there's widespread misunderstanding of the word. Such people think a meme is a picture with some writing on it. Well, that's, that's only, <laughs> only one of a hundred of different types of things. 